This is Dr. Mary McIntyre. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for the Alabama Department of Public Health. Um, I wanted to start with a COVID update to give you some information of where we are and also hopefully try to alleviate some fears and um, that people have. When it comes down to COVID-19, we've been going strong now, close to a year. Um, when, it, the, when we look at the information and stuff out there, we know that we've got over 400,000. As of yesterday, it was 467 cases, thousand cases in the state of Alabama with over 8,000 deaths. Yesterday, we were at 8,364 deaths. We will continue to have people dying. 300 people a day is not acceptable. 100 people dying a day is not acceptable. And when it comes down to me, any death that can be avoided is not acceptable. This is only going to work if the majority of us receive the vaccine, and especially the people that are working with the most vulnerable populations. It is still not the time, even though we have a vaccine available, until we get the majority of people vaccinated, we're gonna to have to continue to do what we're doing. So part of the concerns and the issues, and I'm gonna say this, number one is still limited vaccine supply. Number two is managing expectations of people who are out there who want the vaccine, wanna get it now, um, but don't, don't understand that the highest priority is to try to get it to the folks that are dying the fastest and getting sick the quickest. A lot of people from the healthcare provider standpoint are um, exhausted. A lot of them have gotten sick. Some of them have died um, in trying to provide care and services for people who continue to fight against something as simple as wearing a face cover. Um, and that if we don't have people within the healthcare system that can treat you and take care of you, not just for COVID, but for other problems, then getting vaccinated is gonna be useless for anybody else if the healthcare providers are not able to continue to provide care. But it's not just about people dying, it's also about the fact that there are people who may recover, okay, or survive and live after months of being sick or even weeks, that guess what? They are never gonna have a return to a normal life. It means that these folks um, have symptoms, whether they are, have issues with their heart, there's cardiac damage to some folks. They end up with um, congestive heart failure. Some of them end up with inflammation to the cardiac arteries. There's even some neurological symptoms and manifestations. And people who were relatively young and healthy um, and were able to take care of themselves, they guess what? They no longer can. This disease is not about just about respiratory and the problems that occur in the lungs where it can destroy a lung of a person who has recovered to the point that they may never be able to come off of oxygen again. But when we come down to this vaccine, I've taken the vaccine. My husband has taken the vaccine. My sister, my baby sister, who is a colon cancer survivor has gotten her first dose. I've had both of mine. My husband has had both of his. If I did not believe this vaccine to be safe, I certainly would not have taken it. You can believe that. Because I have done it for my community and I've done it for the people that I love um, from a, the standpoint of trying to protect them. If we wanna get back to any semblance of what is considered to be normal um, we're going to have to get the majority of people within this state vaccinated. Half of us being vaccinated is not going to do it. Um, the majority of us being vaccinated will do it. And in the interim, what we're going to have to do is to continue to do those things that we know that work. 
putting on a face covering, and let me say this, an adequate face covering. If you can blow out a candle or match with the face covering you have on, it's doing absolutely no good. If you're wearing it under your nose, that's doing absolutely no good. I've heard people say, well, the mask doesn't work or the face covering doesn't work. Well, they will not work if you're not doing it appropriately. And the other things that we know work is this, we make sure that we're staying our distance away from other people. And that can mean being in your own home, staying a distance. It is extremely important that you all that can get vaccinated do so to protect your families and yourselves, um, and also the people that you take care of. Because children, this vaccine is not currently approved for them. They're working on it, um, studies to see if it can be given, but kids can also get the COVID and guess what, children die. A lot of things can be done that people consider to be impossible. And that was to get this vaccine developed um, within the time frame that it happened. So I am sure that the vaccine is, is safe. Um, these vaccines do not have heavy metals. I don't know how many people I've had to tell that to. Mercury, no, they do not. They do not contain animal products. It was made from a chemical process using messenger RNA and no, there is no, there are no fetal remnants in it. And there is not a chip in it for people in the um, um, syringe, okay, for people to track you. So I'm trying to address all the myths I've heard. Moderna and Pfizer vaccines do not contain live virus. No, you cannot get COVID-19 from taking the shot. There is no live virus. So what am I going to say and think about that? Yes, you may still get COVID-19 after you've taken the vaccine. It is not 100% effective, but what is? Um, there are very few things that in life that are 100% um, sure. And this vaccine can prevent disease in a large number of people completely and it's 100% in preventing severe disease. So that's enough for me. So even if I get infected, which I could, okay, the disease should be mild and I should survive without having all of the complications and side effects that some people are getting after being sick for weeks or months. I certainly would not have taken it and I certainly wouldn't be recommending it to family and friends and to my church congregation who calls me almost every day um, asking a question. If I did not believe it was safe and if I had any doubts at all, I would not be doing that. We want to be prepared to have folks that are willing to do stuff within the communities, whether it's a church, a community center, or other, to be able to get people vaccinated. So we're focusing on uh, making sure that that happens. And we've already got now enrolled as COVID providers over 800 providers statewide. If you get a call and a, a provider has to cancel or reschedule an appointment, it's probably because they've run out of vaccine at that time and that they will have to recommit when there's more vaccine on hand. So if that occurs, don't curse folks out because we're getting folks yelling, screaming, I had an appointment, they canceled my appointment. Well, if there's no vaccine to put in, there, in your arm, we don't have any choice. So I'm asking you all to please consider um, getting vaccinated against the COVID. It's safe. And the only way we're going to be able to return to some semblance of being able to be return to our old lives is if the most of the majority of it get this vaccine. The vaccine is safe. Get vaccinated.